For today's lesson and activity, I got uh, these ideas from two wonderful teachers. Um, the activity that we will do today is from uh, an art teacher. Her name is Cassie Stevens, and I just loved her idea and activity. Um, so I wanted to make sure I gave her proper credit since this really is her idea. And um, for some of the conversations that we'll have in just a moment, um, I got some ideas from uh, this other teacher, uh, Miss Ahia. Um, and so let's go ahead and get started. Hello, most amazing artists. I hope you are doing wonderful and fantastic and having a wonderful summer as well. Uh, now with this video, it's gonna be a little different than our other videos because I really felt like it was necessary and needed to kind of pause and reflect on some of the things that are, are going on right now. One of the greatest powers that we all have is the power to show acceptance, to show kindness, show empathy, which means uh, have an understanding and compassion for others and, and listening to others. And of course, love. In this video, we are going to be talking about something that has been going on and is so, so important that we need to stop and, and talk about it. If someone were to ask you, hmm, what color is the grass? And you'd probably say, it's green. If someone were to ask you, what color is the sky? And you would say blue, right? Thinking about skin, there is no one color. Each person has their own unique and beautiful skin color. We are all unique and beautiful. Stop and think of all those around you, friends, uh, those who go to school with you, your neighbors, all of us have different skin colors that are beautiful. This is going to be the inspiration for our artwork today. Now there are people that believe that people with brown or black skin should not have the same rights or privileges as people with white skin. And this is called racism. There are many, many layers of racism. But at the heart of it, there are people that believe and think that being white is better than being black. And black people should not have the same rights. This is not an okay thing. This has been going on for many, many hundreds of years. And it is our job to stand up for what is right and stop it. And maybe you think, well, I'm just a kid, so what can I even do? We all have a choice and a voice to say something, to stand up and say it is wrong. For example, if you see someone who is being teased uh, or saying something, even just the slightest comment about someone's skin color, you have a voice and to say and tell them it is wrong. It may not seem like a big deal, but it is. You can talk and have a conversation with your family and friends, you know, more about it and ways to help. You can see some resources down below in the description area beneath this video for more information to help understand and talk about this. We also have a voice and can say something in many different ways, such as in music and poetry and writing, dance, art. However you express yourself, you can make a difference. And that is what our art lesson is all about today. This is about stopping and thinking about our world our diversity, having unity when we work together. So we will be creating a woven art piece of a variety of skin tones and colors. This is a symbol for unity and diversity. Finding the beauty in our differences and beauty in making a difference together. So today we are going to learn how to create these paper weavings and learn how to paint different color skin tones. Once we finish that, we'll go over an artist, her name is Alma Thomas, and create a border inspired by her work. And if you want, you could add some words or text to your art as well. These are the materials we will need today. A black piece of paper, two white pieces of paper, like thick drawing paper, if you have something like that, great. Glue, scissors, cup of water, a paintbrush, something to wipe your brush on, like a napkin or a paper towel 
paints, red, yellow, blue paint, black, and white paint as well. And if you don't have paint, you could use something like crayons and color pencils. Oh, and since we are painting today, you will need a placemat. All right, perfect. Now, this story, The Color of Us by Karen Katz, is a great way for us to start what we're going to be doing next. It's a story about a little girl who learns that skin doesn't just come in one color of brown, but there are many different shades of brown and skin colors. So let's go ahead and learn how to create different skin tones and shades. All right, first thing, we're going to have our paper going landscape or horizontal. Now we're going to use the three primary colors and mix them all together to create brown. Isn't that neat that we can use basically the real MVP of colors, the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, to mix them all together to get brown. Who knew, right? So cool. So we're going to use those, and I'm going to start with creating a stroke of brown. Now, you don't have to do stripes like what I'm doing. If you want to do it a different way, that's fine. But I'm going to do different um, strokes of colors. Now, this is kind of where you get to experiment and play with color and get different tones and shades in tints of color. So what I'm doing here is just mixing those colors together to get different variations of brown. Now you can add black into your um, brown to make it a little darker, and you can add white to your browns to make it lighter. So when we add black to a color, that is called a shade, and when we add white to a color, we call that a tint. So these are different shades and tints of colors that we'll make. Another way you can create different variations of brown is by mixing more of a certain primary color. So for example, you can add a little more yellow to the brown to kind of give it a more of like a warmer uh, feel to the brown or a little more red or a little more yellow and red together. So things like that are more ways you can create different variations of brown. Now when I did this, I did a couple different um, sheets of color. So I painted one whole paper and then I tried to do it again to see how many different shades I could come up with and create. Um, so if you do this one time and you're not happy with it, you could try it again and do it again. Um, and the cool thing about paint is that, you know, you can always paint over it too. I'm using some tempera paint here, but you can use any kind of paint. Um, any paint will work for this. Tempera acrylic paint will do just fine. You could even try some watercolors, but watercolor can be, can be kind of tricky sometimes with something like this, but you can, again, always try it out and see how it goes. Um, that's where art comes in. We can experiment and try new things and see how it works. The number one important thing when we are doing this is to blend, blend, blend. So really mix, mix, mix those colors and blend them together to create these different tones, shades, and tints of brown. So that is key here. Make sure you're blending your colors together. Now you'll see in just a little bit how we will use the primary colors again to create um, a little background for our art piece today. Um, how we can use red, yellow, and blue mixed colors together to create all the colors of the rainbow. So these colors that we have right here, the red, yellow, and blue primary colors, they really are so important um, because they let us create all kinds of colors that we see. After you finish painting, go ahead and let it dry for a little bit, and we are going to start working on our background for now. So. I was inspired by an artist, her name is Alma Thomas, who creates these beautiful works of art. She was an expressionist painter and an art teacher, and you can see in her work that she uses lots of color. It almost looks like a mosaic, but they are paintings. She was the first African-American woman to have a solo exhibition, that means only her, at the Whitney Museum of American Art. That's pretty cool. So I wanna show you how we can uh, create our background inspired by this artist. Now, we are going to learn how to create different 
um, colors using, again, those primary colors. Look at that. So we can use blue and yellow to create green. We can use red and yellow to create orange and take a little bit of red and blue to create purple. And then what I'm going to do is do little strokes of paint to create that mosaic like how just how like Alma Thomas created her paintings little strokes of paint now you can do it in many different ways you can do it in rainbow or you could do like circles like how you saw in her other paintings or just do a mixture of colors it does not matter however you want to create your background These are just some different examples of how I created my background. You don't have to do any of these. Again, you can create your own. Um, I just wanted to give you some different ideas. Um, and again, you only need one background for this in particular lesson. I just created a bunch because I just had a lot of fun and wanted to create a bunch of different ones and see which one I wanted to use. All right, we're going to let that background paper dry. Grab your skin tone paper and some scissors. We're gonna start doing our paper weaving. We're going to first Take that skin tone paper, if it's dry, we're gonna fold in half like a hamburger style or like a card and then open it up and we're gonna cut it down the middle. So now we're gonna see that fold, cut it all the way up. So you have two halves, one, two. We're gonna take one of those halves right now, we're gonna have it going landscape style, fold it in half again like a hamburger or like a card, pinch the corners and fold it all the way down, open it up and you should see a fold. Okay, keep it closed now. We're gonna turn it up so the opening's at the top and we're gonna fold um, the top down about the size of like I would say a penny okay and the fold should be at the bottom right and we should see that folded line we're gonna call that the stop line now we're gonna take our scissors and we're going to cut up and then stop at the stop line do not cut past that line that fold right there you must stop right there if you cut your paper in half you're gonna be in trouble it's okay but really just don't cut past that line stop right there now, remember, the fold should be at the bottom and the opening should be at the top. Don't have it reversed because then it won't work. Again, we're going to cut down the middle on the right side and then cut down the middle on the left side, okay? And make sure you stop at the stop line, that fold. Do not cut past it. Woohoo! So we got one, two, three cuts and you should have four little pieces hanging like that. All right, now we're going to open it up. And so since we are doing a weaving, but we're using paper, this would be called the warp. All right, now we're gonna be creating something called the weft. So this is what we're gonna to use to weave under and over with. So I'm gonna take my other piece of paper and cut little strips of paper to weave, okay? Now I'm going to take um, one of those papers and now I'm gonna do something called under, over, under and over so you should see those four sections right so i'm going to start with the first section make sure you don't skip any that first one right there i'm going to go with my paper and i'm going to go under over under over it's a pattern okay so the first one's pretty easy and then it gets a little tricky and i'll show you why in a minute all right so i went under over under over do you see that pattern okay Remember, you can always pause the video or re rewind at any time because this does get tricky. Now, the second one is not the same as the first because you see if I did the same thing, it's going to fall through. We want it to lock in place like a checkerboard. So we're going to do the opposite of what the one we just did. So the first one we went under, right? Now we're going to go over, under, over, under. So it'll be opposite, over, under, over, under. Okay, and now I push it down to lock it in place. Now I'm starting to create my weaving. You should start seeing kind of like a little checkerboard happening. It's the opposite of the section before. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab another strip. 
Now this is gonna go, is it gonna go, is it gonna start under or over? Remember, it's gotta be the opposite of the one before. Okay, so if we went over, then we're gonna go under, over, under, over. Opposite, right? So always look at the one you just created to make sure you're doing it right so it should lock in place. It shouldn't fall down. You gotta make sure you test it out. It takes a little practice, but you can do it. All right, now, same thing. See if I start again, if I go under, just like how the one I did before, it won't lock in place. So I go opposite, over, under, over, under. So we start, we started with under, over, under, over, then the next one goes over, under, over, under, then the next one's under, over, under, over. It's just opposite. You just switch them up and they should lock into place. Remember, always rewind or pause the video because this I know can be very tricky, but if you pause and watch it carefully, I guarantee you, you will get it. It just takes a little practice. All right, and there you go. There is your weaving. It should lock in place. Beautiful job. Now, we're gonna create um, the heart silhouette that's gonna frame are weaving. So I'm going to take a black piece of paper, I'm going to fold it in half like a card, hamburger style again, and you, sh you should see a fold down the middle. I'm going to cut that fold. A lot of cutting and folding here, isn't it? Okay, now I have two halves. I only need one half for this. So now what I'm going to do is fold that in half again, how like we just did before, uh, hamburger style. Now, I need to make sure the fold is on the left side and the openings on the right, okay? That's very important. What I'm gonna do, so you can see, I'm using a white pencil, you don't have to do that. Um, but just so you can see, what I'm gonna do is mark two little dots on the fold and then draw a curve line and then a diagonal line so those dots meet. So I created a half of a heart, not a whole heart, okay? And now I'm gonna cut through both sides to create my heart. And then if you open up, look at that. I made a heart silhouette. So perfect. So we have a positive and negative shape here. So we're gonna use the um, negative um, heart shape here and uh, glue that frame around our weaving. So it creates a really nice frame around, around what we just made, okay? So we're gonna do that. And then you can leave it like that. If you wanna say this is it, that's your project, you're done and leave it as is, that's fine too. That looks really good. Um, and you can leave it just like that. Now, if you wanna go a little bit further, I've got a couple more steps that you can also do. So if you wanted to cut off those little extra pieces hanging out, you can. If you like it like that, keep it like that. All right, so now we have our heart silhouette. Nice job. And now we're gonna take those background papers that we made before. If you just made one, that's fine. I just did, I got carried away and made a bunch. <laughs> but pick whichever one, if you made more than one, pick which one you like. And um, I'm gonna place my heart in the middle and then I'm gonna glue it down. And remember, open up your glue, do dot, dot, not a lot, or just a little bit of glue around. We don't need a, a too much glue for this, just to make sure it, it sits nicely on our paper. And on, I'm, I'm going to put mine in the middle and there we go. There is my art piece that really summarizes the importance of our diversity. But when we work together, we can create something beautiful. Now, if you even wanted to take this a step further, you can even add some text or writing in your picture as well. Again, these are all options. You don't have to do any of this, of course, but these are just, I wanted to give you some different ways of how you can create your art piece and how you can uh, make or create a message. Thank you so much for creating with me today. I hope you had a really fun time doing this. I encourage you to keep on making a difference and standing up for what is right. And remember that we can change the world together.